through it. it. It may not be orthodox in terms of lacking in the ball movement, but he's such a special scorer. But you know, Greg, I mean, it's one thing to be wind up one on one. That time they ran Clay Thompson off a of screen. And, you know, if they're having him negotiate screens while guarding Kyrie, I'm not mad at that. It fatigues him more, gives him a little bit more options. LeBron with the miss, the rebound to Draymond Green and knocked out of bounds. And Tristan woofing with Draymond right now. It is an 18-point ball game. And uh, if you can't beat him, clutch and grab him, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and getting away with it, you know, even though. It, but it also shows you how difficult in the finals, the intensity level, the physicality of it. You got to fight through that mentally. And we've seen Kyrie here tonight do just that. Well, he knows that he's on. Obviously, he feels that he's on this great role right now. He understands that he and LeBron have carried this team in their best moments up to this point. But they've gotten some other contributions tonight. And that's the difference. They've been waiting for these other guys to step up a little bit. Tristan Thompson, number one. Now, Stu, let me ask you about Kyrie Irving. Games one and two in Golden State, he was 18 of 45 from the field. 18 of 45 in just 43 points. Obviously erupted for 38 in game three. And, uh, uh, you know, just a sensational game here so far tonight. Where was this game from Kyrie Irving in those two games at Oracle Arena? Well, you know, he was having some matchup problems, I felt, with Clay Thompson. But listen, all that doesn't matter. I mean, the, the key point in all of these series, whether it's the finals or earlier rounds, at any point you can get a shift in confidence of one player. And let's fast forward here now and say that, you know, really fast forward, the Cavaliers win this game. It's going to be on the backs of LeBron and Kyrie.